Hello everybody. My name is Printed Boxdale. And I hope that you have you enjoying this YouTube channel. Will you please hit the subscribe and like button? And y'all are gonna have a hallelujah good time, but we got many more to come. And let's have a good time together. Good morning, God is good. This is Sunday morning and we get ready to come to worship service. And I want you to know that for a year or so we met over there in the gymnasium, but on last Sunday we are going we have gone back to the auditorium. So God has blessed us to be able to do that. And we're just thankful to God to be able to get back to worship in the auditorium. With that being said, I want to invite you in. Why don't everybody come on in? Come on in. Why don't you come on in with us? And worship with us this morning. Come on in. Good morning. This morning's lesson is coming from the book of Mark 8, 36 and 37. We're talking about the truth about hell. Nobody, if you ask them, wants to go to hell. If you ask everybody who wants to go to heaven, everybody raise their hand. But are you willing to pay the price to follow Jesus, to keep his commandment, to avoid from going to that place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth? This morning, you don't have to go to hell. I don't have to go to hell. But if we don't follow God's world, word, we all may end up in the lake of fire. And I know I don't want to be there. And I know you don't want to be there. So let us follow the word of God according to his commandment. God bless.
May the Lord have a special blessings on the readers, hearers, and doers of His holy word. Amen. Once again, Amen. we pray for those that 
not in the body of Christ. We pray that the word that go out from the word that it will touch somebody's heart, mind, and soul, that they will come running, running to Christ and accept him before it's too late. And Father, bringing this prayer to a front close, we pray that when you look down from heaven with us, that we will be found just like a tree that planted by the roots of water. That when the wind and storm life come, we will be found standing holy up. Hallelujah. This blood stained down. Just waiting on Jesus to come. And perhaps we be able to say the wonderful words that the apostle Paul said. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole love of God that you might be able to stand in the evil days. Mm -hmm. Father, just be with us. Guide our hearts and minds. Be with the minister as he get ready to stand to bring before us the word of the Lord. Right. This is our prayer in Christ Jesus' mercy. Everlasting in glorious name. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Watch out now. There's nothing in this world it's worth going to hell for. Amen. Because hell is a place that is very hot. Watch out. The Bible even refers to it in Matthew 5, 29. And you read it out here a little while ago. That you talk about if you may look on a woman. And you know how we are, brothers. You know, we like to look. God, we like to look. But looking and lusting can cause you to be lost. Watch out. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Lost, lost. You don't have the freedom in your heart to lust after a woman because that could be the very thing that could send you to hell. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible say in Matthew 5 and, and 29? If your right eye causes you to sin, Mm -hmm. You know, we put a lot of value in our parts of our body. You know, you take a cut the leg off, you know, that's terrible. You take my eye away, that's terrible. But it's better to go and live right and go to heaven with no eyes and no legs and no arms to go to heaven, to go to hell with a full pledged body. Sometimes we take a lot of pride in having our eyes and our legs, but who really wants to go to hell? What if you did go to hell and you had a fine body? Mm -hmm. Head full of hair. All your teeth. You, man, look at me. I'm looking good. But there ain't no good looks down there in burning in hell. Mm -hmm. I'd rather go with my hair being lost. I'd rather go with one tooth. I'd rather go with one leg than go to hell. Amen. Jesus said here, if your right eye causes you to sin, take it out. You know, that's kind of, that's, that's kind of you know, aggressive, isn't it? You know, your right eye just, hey, it calls you to just take it out and get rid of it. He said, why is that? Pluck it out, cast it from you, for it's more profitable for you than one of your members, parent, than your whole body to be cast into hell. It's okay to have a fine body, a healthy body, but it's more important to have a spiritual-minded mind. All right. The Bible says in Matthew 10, 28, friend, you got your book there, so you got your book there, y'all be reading a little bit this morning, because I don't have no glasses up here, they lay down somewhere. <laughs> they up in this building somewhere. <laughs> What's it say there, Matthew 10, 28? What's the Bible say? But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her all Is that day. Matthew 10, 28? 10, 28. Yes. 5, 28. That's all right. And fear not him which killed her by Uh-huh. But I am not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body. That's what you need to be concerned about, church. Yes, that's right. You need to feel one that can destroy the soul and the body. You know, old Fauci, I remember Fauci, I knew Dr. Fauci. People put their trust in Dr. Fauci instead of putting their trust in God. Dr. Fauci is just a man. I fear God and respect God more than what Dr. Fauci has to say. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Right. So many people, the kind of was set down all based on information. People stop going to church. All the based on Fauci's recommendation. That's right. We trust man more than we trust God. Watch out now. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying this Watch morning. Out now. Don't trust in the president. Don't trust in Dr. Fauci. Don't trust in the preacher. Trust in God. Right. And I guarantee you, if you trust in God. You can avoid hell if you just believe and trust in the Lord. Amen, amen. So who, who really wants to go to hell this morning? <clears throat> the Bible says in Revelation 14 and 11, we talk about hell now. Somebody is going to hell because they refuse to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody is going to hell because they don't want to do right in the eyes of the Lord. Somebody is going to hell because they love the world more than they love God. You're in this world, but you're not of this world. We don't act like the world. We don't think like the world because we're in Christ. Amen. And when you're in Christ, that's your vehicle 
to making heaven your home. And long as you stay in Christ, long as you stay in the ship, long as you stay focused, you can avoid going to hell. Amen. I asked the question this morning, how many of you all want to go to hell? And nobody raised their hands and said, I really want to go. But you're willing to not love your brother. All right. Or you're willing not to love your sister. You say, I don't want to go to hell, but let me tell you, if you want to avoid hell, you've got to learn to love your brother and your sister. You've got to learn to forgive. Too many things we've got going on in our lives, too many hang-ups in our lives, and a lot of people are going to go to hell because they got so many hang-ups. Right. Get rid of the hang-ups. Love your brother. Love your sister in order for you to avoid that lot and fire and burning. We all don't look alike. We all don't smell alike. But we surely all are Christians. All right. And you want to make sure you are doing the right thing. What does the Bible say in Revelation 14 and 11? And smoke of their torment and stand up forever and ever. And they had no rest day nor night. You know, we talk about there's no rest in hell, day or night. That means you will be tossing and turning for the rest of your life. That means that you are going to be there for eternity. Man. You know, I can't imagine what it means to say, you know, if I knew a million years from now that I was going to get some relief, I'd just say, at least I got hope because in a million years they're going to relieve me. But once you make it to hell, there is no hope and there is no relief. Amen. And there's no rest. You know, we all want to rest sometimes. Day and night. It, won't, it, it just matter for day or night. It doesn't matter. You're not going to rest there. You're not going to go to hell and be cool and chill. No. It's going to be a fire. It's going to be a party. And the party's going to last forever. Mm -hmm. We need to look at that when we start walking in Christ. What, do we really want to go to a place? What in the hell is in there for us? There's nothing in hell for us as Christians. Amen. Don't even try to entertain it because it's a place that you don't want to go. Amen. No rest. It's a prepared place for the devil. Somebody said, I don't like old Florida. You might be tangled up with old Florida. <laughs> you might be right there for the rest of your life. Eternity, yes, sir. But I don't plan on going to hell. I'm going to do all I can do to stay out of hell. Amen. I realize that it's just not a green light to go to heaven, mm -hmm. but I realize there's some obedience that must take place. Right. Many of us will be lost because we refuse to obey the word of God. That's it. That's obedience it. is better than sacrifice. That's right. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, I, don't, I really don't want to go to hell. I really want to go to heaven. Well, you better you know, start doing the right thing. You know, start acting right and keep his commandments. Look what the Bible says in Matthew 25, verse number 41. Brother, 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 uh, brother, uh, what's your name over there? <laughs> you know your name over there, Bill is up. C. <laughs> what's your name over there? Come on, man. C. Then you will also say to those on the left hand, depart from me, you curse. going to be for people <clears throat> when he says depart from me there's going to be a separation that's going to take place there's going to be a divide that's going to take place and you know you don't want the Lord to say depart from me you want the Lord to say come and go with me because right. when that day comes if you not live right if you not obey the gospel He's going to say, depart from me. No, no, depart from me. He said, from me, you cursed into everlasting fire. Mm -hmm. Prepare for the devil and his yes. angels. angels. Amen. The devil, the, the hell is a prepared place. But you don't have to worry about that, do you? Because you're going to heaven. Amen. Well, you better stop forsaking the assembly. 
Watch out now. Somebody said, what you mean? Hebrews 10, 25. Watch out, preach. It ain't changed. Is it, is it more important for you to stay home or not to come to worship and lose your soul? Because there hasn't been a command, Hebrews 10, 25, not to forsake them for something. All right. Is it better for you to keep money in your pocketbook on Sunday and not give back to the Lord when you're commanded to give? Do you want to go to hell for your five dollars? Do you want to go to hell for an extra die all the time? Y'all ain't what I'm saying. On, Would you exchange that? I don't think so. So if you ask somebody up here, I'll give you five million dollars to exchange it for uh, going to hell. How <laughs> many I mean, you gonna take it? If I, if I pull out my phone, five million dollars, say it's five million dollars. You can have it, but just go ahead. Every one of you all will turn me down. Isn't it a bit like it? Oh, no, no. Watch I'm gonna five million dollars on my money. <laughs> so, somebody might say, burn, baby, burn. <laughs> but I believe everybody will say, no, sir. I think so. Prepare. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hell is a place for. Wicked mankind. Hell. Hell is a place for wicked people. That's right. And there are some wicked people out there. Amen. But it doesn't have to be you. That's right. Everybody they talk about hell. Somebody turn to 2 Peter 2, verse number 4. We're talking about hell tomorrow this morning. Why you want to the truth about hell is a hot place. A fire that never will be quenched. Somebody read that for me. For if God spared not the angels, uh -huh. the sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be re re reserved unto judgment. If God did not spare the angels and deliver them down into a dark place, why do you feel God will not send you to hell? He won't send you to hell. You send yourself to hell. That's right. God wants everybody to go to heaven. God, he doesn't want anybody to perish. But unfortunately, the Bible says hell has enlarged itself. There are a lot of people are going to go to hell and sell themselves out for this world. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody. It's worth me. It's changing my soul. I don't know anybody can get in my way. To stop me from loving them. Even my enemy. I'm going to love my enemy. All right. I'm going to be good to those that, regardless of whether they love me or not, or whether they like me or not. I'm going to be good to people who, whether they don't like the way I preach or where somebody else is like, I'm going to love them too. I'm going to love all the naysayers. I'm going to love all the backstabbers. I'm going to love everybody because I don't want to go to hell. And in order for me to go to heaven, I've got to love everybody. Amen. Ain't no options. That's right. You got to do it. Yeah, like and you know, when, when you think about how good God is, uh, it's not hard to love your enemy. You know, sometimes we got somebody to hang up, you know, well, you know am I going to speak to you or not this morning? Am I not going to speak to you? How in the world we play the game when we know that we can end up in hell talking about I don't like John Owen. All right now. I don't want that to come through my lips. And if it gets in my heart, I'm going to get it out. Because I realize in order for me to serve God, I must have a clean heart. Amen. A clean heart. Well, so he's not going to spare the angels. Amen in heaven. Luke 16. Somebody get it for me. This man right here, he can tell you about the experience of what the fire is all at. Verse number 19. Somebody start. I'll uh, get that. We look at that. There was a certain rich man which uh -huh. was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar yes. named Lazarus, mm. which was laid at his gate full of sores, mm -hmm. and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Mm. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. In hell, he lifted up. He's a rich man. You know, sometimes we feel like we got money and riches, 
that we all right. Here's a rich man who watched a beggar every day. The Bible says he lifted up his eyes where? In hell. And you know what? That torment is going on right now. Even since he look, since he's been there. He's being tormented. You know, there's a state in part that while we wait on judgment day, uh, this rich man is in torment as we speak. Can you imagine being just burning and, and in heat and darkness? I think that's a, per that's a terrible, miserable place to be mm -hmm. in hell. Lord have mercy. It's a miserable place to be mm -hmm. in hell. Amen. What is hell going to be like for those who go there? That's my question to you. You may not have to answer that question because you're not going. You don't have to go. Mm -hmm. We we'll all have the opportunity to go to heaven. Isn't it amazing that there's no uh, prejudice, there's no uh, statue or uh, no status or anything. Anybody who obeys the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, you can go to heaven. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. But you don't have to do much to go to heaven. You don't have to do anything. Here's several horrors of hell. One is the horror of darkness. Brothers and sisters, in hell, it's going to be nothing but darkness. Mm -hmm. There will be no light in hell. No. There will be uh, nothing but darkness. Have you ever been in a dark room before? I remember some years ago, we went to the Mammoth Cave uh, in Kentucky. And we went in the Mammoth Cave and they turned the lights out. It is so dark in a cave, I would probably die or go crazy if they never turn the lights back on. Because I didn't know what the ridge was. I couldn't see my head. All it was was pure darkness. Can you imagine that's what hell is going to be like? Nothing but pure darkness. Nothing will ever change. It'll be like that for eternity. You'll be in complete darkness. At least you know that you're going through a tunnel and you know there's light on the other side. You can say, well, I can laugh a little while going through this tunnel because after I got to get through it, there's going to be light on the other side. But when you go to hell, you are not going to ever see any light anymore. See you want to go to hell? Lord have mercy. Look what the Bible says in Jude 13. Jude 13, the Bible says raging waves of the sea forming out of their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Darkness Forever. I can't imagine what that really means. Forever. The Bible says in Matthew 25 and 30, And cast ye the unprofitable servant without a darkness, and that shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Can you imagine in the darkness you hear people weeping and gnashing of teeth? How horrible that really is. Can you imagine that you know you, you're not going to stop hearing it? Can you imagine? Have you ever heard anybody who's moaning and groaning? You know, I've gone to some nursing homes. I've moaned and groaned myself. It can get on your nerves, can it? Oh, oh, I'm hurting. Oh, oh. You know what? That's going to be like that for the rest of somebody's life if we don't get on the right track. Darkness. I'm talking about one of the horrors of hell is darkness. All right. One preacher asks, why darkness? The Bible says in James 1.17 that Jesus, that God is the Father of light. All right. And if you want to be a child of God, you're going to walk in the light. If you're a Christian, you're not going to walk in darkness, you're going to walk in the light. That's right. The rich man said, I got brothers, man. Mm -hmm. I sure would like to go back and tell them don't come here. Because it sure is hot up in here. Mm -hmm. See, once you go, you can't go back. Actually, you don't want to go. 
This is your chance right now to escape hell. But once you die, if you have repented of your sin, if you have not changed your life, you can lift your eyes up in hell. Then you want to go tell, go tell my mama, go tell my daddy, go tell my cousin. It's too late then. The Bible says you had your chance. You had your chance right now to escape hell. You have your chance right now to right. tell people about Jesus. Right. This is your chance right now. That's it. And once you die, your chance is over. So we're talking about <coughs> darkness. Mm -hmm. Number two, the hall of fire. Fire, I think most of us understand that we don't like fire. You know, if I bring a torch and I put it on your bottom, you're going to move. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody, if I torch your bottom, you're going to move. Some of us I'm never going to obey the God. I'm never, oh yeah, one day that fire, if you get out of it, you won't move. Because fire, it burns. If you ever touched a hot stove or a hot iron before, you say, ooh, I don't want to touch that because of that's hot. At a very young age, as children, they learn not to touch hot stuff because they know that it'll burn. We as Christians, we need to learn that we don't need to touch stuff that will cause us to burn. I'm talking about from a spiritual standpoint. I'm talking about the heart of fire. Turn your Bible to Matthew 25 and 41. The Bible says in Matthew 25, verse number 41. Then shall he say, uh -huh. unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into each in everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Once again, once again, let me just share with you this morning that if I thought that after eight hours the fire was going to go out, I'd say I can handle that. If I thought after the end of the shift of a job the fire was not going to burn anymore, I could handle that. But this fire will never, ever go out. Don't you know that some people believe that uh, the concept of you, if once you die and go to hell that you, only, you, you burn up and that's the end of your life. I can live with that. You burn up and you're gone. But that's not the way it's set up. You're going to know where you are. And that to me is, is important. You know, sometimes, you know, when you think, well, if I'm dead and nobody, nobody will never know, you're going to know. You're going to know about the fire. And you don't know how it's going to burn. Somebody turn to Mark 9.43. 9.43. It is better to do what? Mark 9.43. What does Bible say? It is better for you to do what? If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life manic rather than having two hands to go to hell and to the fire that shall never be quenched. Brothers and sisters, you don't want to go to hell because the fire will never be quenched. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. Everything in this world is going to burn up. Your degree is going to burn up. Your house is going to burn up. Your cars are going to burn up. This building is going to burn up. Everything is going to burn up. Amen. But, hey, but, but you know what? Burn up. A fire that will never ever be quenched. Have mercy. That ought to not scare you, but that ought to tell you that you don't want to go to hell because you're going to be faced with a fire that, you, that will burn for the rest of eternity. God have mercy. Are you going to take a chance this morning to go to hell for not obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ? I'm trying to come to a conclusion, okay? Come on, preacher. The Bible says that it's a place where the worms does not die. Mm -hmm. You know, you ever seen worms, you know, they will die, but this is a place where the worms just keep on burning, baby. You're going to keep on burning. You know, you, you're going to be there for 50 years, you're going to keep on burning. And you don't want to keep on burning. Mm -hmm. Turn the Bible to Revelation 21 and 8. People are going to burn right here. 
if they don't change their life. Revelation 21, hey, somebody, you read it before, let's read it again. Somebody read it from Revelation 21, hey. But the fearful and abominable. Say it again. But the fearful Some and people are going to be lost because they're so fearful. And God doesn't like fearful people. He wants us to trust in him. And I tell you, when the pandemic came, there's a lot of people got real fearful. I got it. Didn't know whether I was going to die or not. But I still had to trust in God. Right. I didn't get the wrong on purpose. I didn't go around and say, give me Corona. But I still trusted in God. Right. I, was, I told myself, if I die, if I perish, I perish. Do I want to die today? No, I don't want to die today. But that's not my call. Right. Somebody said, well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, wait till the, the play of class my goodness, you think a lot of pass? Realize. Go back to one. And I'm pleading as an abominable, uh -huh. and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their heart in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. The adulterers, whoremongers, liars, all those people who are being. Hell, if there's not a repentance taking place. Let me tell you something else that won't be for all of them. There will be no mercy in hell. No mercy. You know, we got all the mercy in hell right now. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, help me to get through this. Lord, please forgive me of my sin. We have mercy right now. But in hell, there will be no mercy. There will be no one to turn to and say, can you help me? Amen. Right now is your time for mercy, for forgiveness, for repentance, because the Lord, He definitely has had mercy on us. Amen. Let me tell you something else won't be, won't be no open hell. You know, today, I can lose my family, I still got hope. I can lose my friend, I still got hope. I can lose my sight, and I still got hope. Because as long as I'm in Christ, I have hope. But once you go to hell, there's no hope in hell. Do you really want to go to hell? Because there's no hope in hell. You get down there and say, well, who can help you? You're all in the same book. There's no hope in hell. Let me say something. I really kind of stuck me a little bit about the horror of hell. The horror of memory. You know, if I didn't know, I could say, okay, I'm going to hell and I'm not going to know anything. Evidently, the rich man must have known something. Right. Because he told him to go back and tell his brothers about it. Mm -hmm. You're going to have some memory in hell. Right. You're going to remember the time you set a bad example for your little young guy. You don't remember you had an opportunity to do right. You don't be like the rich man. He had an opportunity to, to feed the beggar. He had an opportunity with people around him. And there come a time that people will go to hell that you might have a memory of what you could have done. Right. Lord, you know what I would have done better? I tell you all right. I didn't know it was going to be that hot down here, but I'm trying to tell you now. Amen. It's going to be hot. Amen. And it's going to be a fire. So you're going to have some memory. You're going to remember how you treated me. I'm going to remember, you know, and, and let me tell you, I, I think I've had two times I've had a doubt about a good day. I think twice that I thought I was going to die anyway. Maybe three times. But in my memory, I begin to reflect my life. Because you don't have a whole lot of time, and some people don't even get a chance to reflect their life. They just die and they go. Like Ananias the fire. They didn't have to, they didn't have to reflect, they just die. But I got to think, you know, am I doing this? Did I do that? Did I do this? Do that? You know, and because, you know, I'm still living. And when, if you go to hell, you will have a memory of the things that you did. You remember that woman you shacked with? You don't remember that. I, I, I know I shouldn't have shacked with her, but, but now it's too late. You're going to remember that. You remember that man that Another man tried to marry another man. You don't remember that. There will be people who are homosexual 
in hell. That don't mean because you have been dealing with your agenda that you cannot get out of it. But if you don't get out of it and repent of it, you're going to find yourself burning in hell from, from lustful desires. So that's going to be memory. I'm trying to conclude because I want to get out of here early. Who will be there in hell if they go? Good people. A lot of good people go to hell. Yes, good intentions don't make you, don't, don't get you to hell. Somebody, I had good intentions. God knows my heart. God, He knows your heart, but He wants you to do what's right in your heart. You know, just because you're good doesn't mean it, can, it does not give you a green light yes, to go to heaven. You gotta be bold and be good. You gotta be obedient, obedient to God's word. There will be a lot of good moral people there too. People who don't cheat on their wives, people who don't lie, they're going to be people who work hard every day, and they're going to end up in hell Amen. because they refuse to follow God's commandments. Amen. They're going to be some loving people, but not obedient people that's going to be in hell. They're going to be some neighbors, and your good neighbor, I got one of the best neighbors in the city. But he is not all Christian. He's a better than his neighbor. He's a better neighbor than some of the Christians you feel about. He's one of those guys that whatever I say, can you help me? He says, what can I do for you for? Isn't it amazing? He is not a Christian. He doesn't know Jesus. But he'll help him just like that. Sometimes you ask a brother or sister to help you. You can't find them. Now see, I, I, you know, I done told him to take out his tree in the house. I told him to keep his dog over there. I told him don't park the car over there. I told him all these things, and he just complied. I won't speak. <laughs> but you know what? He acts as if he's a Christian by his attitude that he possesses. Because when you become a Christian, there's a certain attribute that you have and how you act. And he has that potential. There's going to be some good civic workers going to be there. There's going to be a lot of religious people in hell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, people who, have, who practice and have more faith than you would ever think about. People who come to every service, the doors are open. There are people out there that, the religious people that have more love than us Church of Christ folks. Now you know what I'm saying? Have you ever met a good old loving, caring person and they do anything for you? That's how we should be as Christians. We try to do anything for each other. The hall of eternity. Somebody turn to 2 Thessalonians 1 7. Eternity has no end. You know, when you go to school for four years, you know that through that process you say, man, I can't believe I graduated. We should know after four years you're going to graduate. Can you imagine being in prison and you get 20 years in prison, you start mocking off the day, the 19th year, the 17th year, the 8th, and then you go on down and then you come down the last four or five years and I'm about to get out. But hell is not like that. There's no check off. It's eternal. And it's eternal to the point that it never will end. What does the Bible say? Second Thessalonians 1 7. 1 7, okay. And to you who are troubled, rest for love, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with the mighty all right, I'm going to try to conclude with a couple of things about how to avoid hell. One thing about hell, okay, you won't be alone, okay? Don't think you'll be by yourself. You'll have some friends. You really are. But you don't have to go. The Bible says in uh, Mark 8, 36 and 37. We're going to try to conclude on that in a sense of the word, in my conclusion. Mark 8, 36 37. Somebody read that, and I'm going to tell you 
how to avoid it, and how you can become a Christian, and how you can avoid hell. The Bible says what? For what shall it profit a man? For what shall it profit a man? If he shall gain the whole world. If he shall gain the whole world. And lose his own soul. And lose his soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Are you willing to give up your life for this world, your eternal salvation for this world? This world has nothing to offer us. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. And we should want to do all the spiritual things that we can do while we live. We need more spiritual minded people in the church. We need people who all they think about is Jesus. They need to become a fool for Jesus Christ. Because whatever you achieve in this world, and I'm not saying that it's good to go out and get education, it's good that you have you can have some of the things that the Lord has blessed us with, but make sure you put Christ first, because this world is not our home. What is the problem of man? What if you become the CEO of the company? What if you become the president of the United States? What if you are the supervisor of your job? What if you have the baddest ride on the block? What if you have a governor's house over the governor's club? If you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. Right. What does it profit a man? To have a fat 401k? I know people that come into the office and they work hard to save their money. And they got big fat 401k. And then I hear tomorrow that they fell dead. They worked so hard to try to get a big saving and they fell dead. It's okay to save. But by the same token, you gotta live while you're living. Exactly. And you gotta put Christ first in your living. Exactly. It's sad to see people come in there and work 35, 40 years. Just a couple weeks ago, I got a phone call and said, I want to know. So and so just died and he just retired. See, one thing about the church, you can't retire okay. in the church. You can retire from your job. So as I'm old now, I don't have anything to get you to. Yeah. You know how to make phone calls, you know how to write letters. It's always something to do in the church. Yeah. Don't ever feel like, you know what, I'm old, I can't do anything now. That's the devil's workshop. Because as long as blood is running through your veins, you can do something for the church. The Bible says in Galatians 5, 21, envy, murder, drunkenness, revel. These are the things that get you in uh, to hell. Galatians 5, 21, it says adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, hatred, wrath. That'll get you going the right direction, the wrong direction, going to hell. Right. Ephesians 5, 5, for this ye know that no whoremonger, no unclean person, no, would have no inheritance of the kingdom of God. Every man, every woman likes sex. Huh? Not necessarily. Let me go. Let me say it again. Sex is something that is destroyed. Sex is on TV. Sex is in our music. Sex is everywhere. God made us that I will be attracted to women. And she made a woman be attracted to me. But what he wants us to do is get married before we have sexual intercourse. Is that plain? That's right. Some people are shabby and having sex or whatever they want to do. Yes, sir. I'm talking about the church. The church. Do you want to go to hell for that moment of feeling that you're feeling again? You know? Do you really want to go to Hell for that, you know what I mean? I mean, a, a, a few seconds of pleasure for the eternity of your soul. Ah, uh, now you know what I'm saying. Hell is a hot place. Yes, sir. And many people are going. Yes, sir. Everybody talking about heaven? Ain't going. The Bible says, without wholeness, no man shall see the Lord. We need more holy people in the church. Holy people are respectful people of God's word. You know, if you see somebody holy, we kind of make fun of them. Oh, they holy. And Brother Brother said, they what? Too holy. But they holy. Sometimes we're afraid to be called holy. She's holy. He's holy. That's a good thing. Holy people act differently than. Oh, 
lonely person. They try to watch what they say. They try not to curse. They try not to say things that, you know, we don't want to be through our mouths. But you know our mouths are destroyers. You know our mouths will destroy a preacher. A mouth will destroy a teacher. A mouth will destroy a family. That's why it's so important to keep our mouth off of one another and let us build one another up. You know what? I have learned being a preacher. Everybody's not going to like your preaching. That was kind of hard for me at first because you know, I'm new at it. But I have to learn that as long as I'm preaching the gospel, and long as that's true, it's on you whether or not you want to receive it or not. Amen. Because the bottom line is, is that you can't please everybody, Amen. but you can please God. That's right, sir. This AC system here, there are people out there that are cold, there are people that are hot. You turn it down, they say it's too hot. You turn it up, they say it's too low. So I'm just saying you can't please everybody, but learn to please God, Amen. and you will avoid going to hell. We need more holy people in the church. What is sin in the Bible is disobeying, disobeying God's commandment. Mm -hmm. Sexual sin, incest, bestiality. I was looking at, you know, it's amazing. I, you know, some years ago, this plane went, and I think that uh, they, 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 the, the, the glaciers, the plane crashed, and, and they had to survive off of eating one another. And I asked somebody, you know, that, that does the Bible excuse that because uh, they were out there in the glaciers and nobody could find them for 11 days and they had to start eating up on each other? Can you imagine if I'm laying over there and they see big 250 little ones for they hungry and they're going to say, I'm about to starve. And look at that big old baby there and that big old fire over there. But be silent, they still be silent. Sometimes we have an excuse to feel like we can do what we need to do, but it's still be silent, and we should not be using beasts for sexual encounters. Now, what called cannibalism or something? Like that was me and people thought people and people. And you were surprised how many people are having sex with animals. Y'all don't believe that, do you? Y'all don't believe that, That's out there. That's real stuff. Strife, conflict, arguments, quarreling, contention, all the stuff that causes us to be lost. Porn. You know, pornography is a big deal. It has destroyed many families. It has caused many people to leave their faith because they get involved in pornography. Last two things. How can we avoid hell? John 14, 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And then if you turn back to the Bible, to Matthew 22, 36 to 37. Somebody get back and we'll close on that. I'm trying to say we can avoid hell, because hell is a hot place. Well, that fire, look at that, look at that. That fire will never, ever go out. We will burn, not you will burn, not I will burn it, I hope you will burn it, but whoever goes to hell will burn my own for the eternity. What does the Bible say in Matthew 22, 36, 37? What does that? 22? Yes. 22, 36, 37. What about it, sir? Master, if I have to break the marriage in the law. Uh huh. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With all that soul. Stop right there. The Bible said, what is the greatest commandment? He said to do what? Love who? The Lord thy God. We know we can love God more than we do. We all know that, right? Right. Read on. With all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. I give myself away. Right. Read. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Don't go, don't think you're going to heaven if you can't. Uh, mimic what he just read. 
Loving the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your might. Giving yourself to the Lord. If you want to be a Christian, you got to give yourself to the Lord. I give myself away. I think I saw him in South Africa. What did it say about that one? And the second is like unto it. Uh, love thy neighbor. Like unto it. I mean, just come, just like it, you know. And there is two commandments hang on the wall and the cross. Don't you know that they said these two, two commandments hang on the what? All law and the prophet. Brothers and sisters, if we don't have love, don't expect to go to heaven. Nice. If you want to go to heaven, you've got to have love in your heart. You gotta love God with all your heart and all your soul. Don't expect to run up into heaven and you can't love one another. Learn to love, learn to forgive, learn to share, learn to try to be like Jesus. Right. And you know what the writer in 1 Corinthians tells you in 13? Without love, you have nothing. Without love, you have nothing. This morning you can avoid hell by repenting of your sin. You heard about how Christ died. You believe that. Repent of your sin. Confess him and put him on the baptism. If you've been lying, stop lying. If you've been stealing, stop stealing. I told people many times before, you can put all your money on the table right here. And I won't even think about it because it's not mine. Now, wrong now, they might think about it. But you can put your Christian green donuts over here and I'll watch your donuts like a hog and see how long they stay there and see if I can find somebody and maybe have one. But your dollar, I wouldn't take your dollar for nothing because I, I, I'm not wrong. You know, when you, when you, you, know, you put a pack of cigarettes right here, I don't care about the cigarettes here because I'm not a smoker. You can put your drugs right here. I can care less whether it be a or whether it be a uh, needle or whatever. There's no desire for me. See, everybody got their own desires and temptations. So here this morning, one more hell. Come on this morning and give your life to Christ. Yes, Why would you never stay as in the song of invitation? Come on from the lost and away. Thank you. 
Somebody is come on, church. Sure.